Edison, as an adult, would say he had not heard songbirds sing since he was 12 years old. He had hearing issues from childhood on, and he was practically deaf most of his adult life. When you can create something that replicates a sense, what an extraordinary piece of technology that is. You've created something that recreates a specific sound. Your voice, her song, those songbirds. You have a sense that's been limited for so long, and, and now, just turn up the volume. Consider the modern cell phone, a wonder of innovation. Nearly all its functions, visual imaging, audio recording, music playback, light, electricity, were popularized by one man. Thomas Edison had no small ego and liked to promote himself as a lone inventor, the wizard of Menlo Park. But his true genius was organizational. He built the first research and development laboratory, decades before the federal government or corporate America followed his lead. Eventually, an astonishing 5,000 scientists, engineers, and laborers brought his visions to life. You can't take out 1,100 patents in your lifetime by yourself. He's employing very creative guys who are brought in and told, there are no rules here, just create. Just get as creative as you can. And he would put a problem in front of them. I want a machine that can do this. And then off they go. He was the model of somebody, the inventor who made the transition into the business world. And this is the secret of modern business successes like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. They have the ideas, they start out as almost this lone inventor, but the ones who make it big and have the big influence on the world are the ones who can carry a really good idea into the marketplace and then make it available to millions of people. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph, a little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Edison took full credit for any and all creations of his shop. He drove his team relentlessly through six and seven day work weeks, but he also toiled in the trenches, inspiring his men to go the extra mile. I think it's important that he's not employing them as management, and then there's labor. He's working with them, and I think that's crucial. They got along with this guy. They liked their boss. He, he brings in a pipe organ to the lab so that they can sit around later in the day and somebody can play the organ. They can have sing-alongs together. Well, that doesn't sound like most jobs that I've been a part of anyway. When Edison coined the phrase, invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration, he was speaking from first-hand experience. His style of engineering was uh, brute force type of engineering. Try this, try this, let's try this. Let's do it until we find out what works. What he did was he kept trying different materials until he finally got the right material, the right atmosphere within the light bulb so that it became a practical tool. Edison was determined to develop a commercial light bulb and he needed a filament that could burn for an extended period without consuming itself. His team tried everything, horsehair, coconut fiber, fish line, 
spider webs. More than 6,000 materials were tested before he settled on carbonized bamboo. Edison was in a never-ending race with other inventors to be the first. He was forever suing competitors, claiming they had stolen his ideas. In 1884, Nikola Tesla arrived in the United States from Budapest with a letter of introduction to Edison. The two inventors quickly became bitter rivals. You had these two different models of uh, scientific development. Tesla went out on his own and set up very small labs focused on individual projects that he was interested in and pursued them, while Edison had this very large-scale industrial throughput effort to come up with answers. They battled over the best method of delivering electricity. Tesla favored alternating current, or AC. Edison promoted direct current, DC, and was not above some flim-flam to manipulate public opinion. He began holding these demonstrations to try to show how dangerous alternating current was. And he literally put an elephant on a metal platform and then ran a huge amount of electricity and electrocuted this poor beast in order to provide a shocking demonstration of just how dangerous alternating current was. But of course, what he didn't say was that direct current would have done exactly the same thing or even worse. The current war, as it came to be known, reached its climax at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. Chicago's Beau Arts White City wowed visitors from around the globe, awestruck by the dazzling illumination provided by Tesla's AC. Edison had lost the battle, but would win the legacy war. His name became synonymous with electricity. And electricity transformed the Earth. The Industrial Revolution passed in two waves. Steam power changed how things were made, but electrical power changed how we lived. Cheap, easily available power in the home makes modern life possible. Washing machines, radios, television, and eventually, the internet. As light spread across the globe, humans by the millions were drawn, like moths to the flame, to the lights of the big city. Once they've seen the bright lights of the city, how are you gonna get them back down on the farm? The cities in those days had bright lights when no place else did. And they operated like a magnet to draw people from overseas, to draw people from farms to the cities. Because all of a sudden, a city that's brightly lit is this exciting place to be. When you can light up the night, then cities can become these 24 hour a day operations. It utterly changes the nature of modern life. Old newsreels of Edison often show him cupping his hand to an ear, struggling to hear. From age 12 onward, he suffered severe hearing loss. Perhaps it's no surprise that he called the phonograph his favorite invention. Death himself from a blow on the ear received as a boy, Edison turned his attention to the field of sonic engineering, and under his magic touch, the grandfather of our modern day phonographs appeared. Using wax cylinders to record and preserve the sound, the Edison gramophone again opened up a brand new field of endeavor and a prosperous industry that was to make billions for its management. When you can recreate sound and amplify the sound too, so that he could hear things, well, I would think that would be your favorite invention because you have a sense that's been limited for so long. And, and now, just turn up the volume. I, I think it'll be extraordinary. Many Americans fighting in World War I had never journeyed beyond their hometown. Suddenly, 
they found themselves in a strange land, thousands of miles from home, with Germans across the trenches trying to kill them. Those soldiers treasured any reminder of home, none more so than music played on Edison's phonograph. When the war finally ended, the normally reserved American commander, General Black Jack Pershing, was ready for a celebration. Right at the end of the war, when uh, they came down to the front and announced that the war was over, Germans had surrendered, uh, he, he, he got a hold of one of these phonographs and cranked it up and he danced to the music, which, which Pershing would never do on a normal day. As with so many other innovations, Edison did not invent the motion picture camera, but he did improve and popularize it. The world's first movie studio was 3,000 miles from Hollywood in West Orange, New Jersey. Edison Studios started as a black box with no ceiling Across 20 years, it would produce nearly 1,200 films. Edison is the one who makes the modern motion picture industry possible. He's the one who realized this, that you can freeze action on film and then replay it. So just as his phonograph froze speech for playing later, his motion picture devices froze pictures to be shown later. He's always the guy who invents something with an understanding of this has to be marketable in some way, used in some practical way, and then I want to be the guy who does that too. There, there's, a, there's what we call vertical integration to what Edison does. He invents it, and then he creates the company that makes it, and then he creates the company that sells it. As the 20th century dawned, Millions of immigrants came to America, dreaming of a better life in a land where anything was possible. Whether they hailed from Russia, Germany, or Ireland, they knew all about a world-famous symbol of freedom. Not the Statue of Liberty, not any flag or natural feature. Their first glimpse of the new world was made possible by Thomas Edison the dazzling lights of Coney Island. When I look around at the resources of the electrical field today, I feel that I would be glad to begin again my work as an electrician.